We want to hear your voice this morning, God. For those who need a word of encouragement, God, do what only you can do. God, for those who need a word of guidance, God, provide a guidance that only you can provide. God, for those who need to be rebuked, God, may your grace be upon all of us. God, we want to hear your word. So God, we pray that every word that we hear this morning, God, may come and may be inspired by you. But may I decrease at every moment, God, that you may increase. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, church. So we're wrapping up today this sermon series called Be a Christian, Not a Jerk. And, and I want to start with this question. How many of you guys have ever been engaged in a conversation with somebody that based on what he or she does for a living, it just hijacks the whole conversation. For example, have you ever been in a conversation with somebody that when you're talking with him or her and say like, yeah, I'm a doctor, the next thing that comes out of your mouth is like, hey, do you mind checking this spot that I have back in my back <laughs> that has been bothering me? <laughs> or, or you talk with somebody and she tell you or he tell you, I'm a teacher, and then you just start telling them, oh, this is, this is what I think is wrong with the school system. Or this is what actually I think you guys should be doing teaching children. Uh, I tend to do that, right? And, and I don't really do it in order to be, you know, cynical or, or to take advantage, right? If somebody's an electrician, say, hey, I have three bulbs in my house that I can change. Can you help me out? But it's just trying to connect with somebody. Uh, as a pastor, it happens all the time. Uh, and I try to avoid coming with somebody and, and start by having the conversation that I am a pastor. Because it's it changed the tones, right? I mean, if it may change what they have in their hands, right? I mean, they put the drink down, or they stop cussing, or, uh, or the, cl- the classic, right? They just start uh, apologizing why they don't go to church, right? Like, well, I don't go to church because of this, and I don't go to ch-. So, you, That's fine. I'm not, I'm not here to tattletale on God about what you do with your life, right? So this week, I was in St. Simon's for, for a meeting, and, and as I was driving back, I st- uh, stop into a gas station right outside of, uh, of St. Simon's. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting gas, and you see, you know, the pump is there, and there's two sides of the pump, right? I mean, you're, you're doing your thing, and there's the other side of the pump. Uh, and as I'm getting gas, I can hear somebody on the other side fighting with the pump. Like, Man, this thing's not working, and just getting frustrated with it. Uh, so I go and see if I can help. Now, here's the thing, like, I don't know nothing about pumps, right? I mean, I don't even know what I was going to. I'm mean, just be curious about what's happening, right? So, hey, everything okay? He said, well, this thing is not working and blah, blah, blah. We did discover that he was trying to put the diesel uh, thingy. I don't know how do you call that. How do you call that? Nozzle, the, the, the diesel nozzle into the gas. So I, I did help him with that. At least I was good enough to help him with that. Um, and as I was talking with him, he said, hey, what do you do for a living? Uh, or what are you doing here? And I said, well, I was, I was just in St. Simon's in, uh, in a meeting. He said, well, what kind of meeting? Uh, and I was like, oh, just, just a work meeting, uh, just about management. Uh, he said, oh, what kind of management? And I said, well, <laughs> people management. Uh, I was really trying to avoid going there, right? And he said, well, so what, for what company do you work? And I said, well, I'm a pastor, man. And, and he was just dealing about that. Uh, he said, oh, yeah, I go to church, I go to church. I said, that's fine, I mean... I don't get paid by commission, every person that I meet, right? That if they go to church or not, that's, not my, that's, that's on you. I said, no, I go to church. Said, oh, that's great, man. Uh, well, I'm glad you're all hooked up. I mean, and I'll never see you again in my life, right? So bye. Uh, he said, hey, before you leave, can you pray for me? I said, sure. And, and that has happened before, right? And, and usually when somebody... It takes a lot of courage, by the way. I mean, just let me go ahead and say that if you're watching, I mean, uh, thank you for that courage. Uh, and I usually expect, you know, just the one thing that is pressing, right? Uh, and he started, I'm just having issues with my wife. Uh, we, we're in a really, really rough patch. Uh, and, and I don't know if, I don't know what's next. Uh, and what you're praying for that, would you mind praying also for my daughter? I think, I think she's doing drugs. 
Uh, I don't really know, but some of the indications that we have. Uh, and then he goes, and, and while you're praying for that, I mean, I shouldn't have bought the car that I have right now. I'm, I think I'm going to get laid off for my work. I mean, he just spent the next 10 minutes just unloading his life. Um, so I said, yeah, I'll, I'll pray for you. And, you know, we took a couple of moments, and, uh, and we pray. And before I left, I said, hey, I mean, you have a lot going on in your life. I, I really want to encourage you to, to go and talk to your pastor. I mean, you, you need more just than a prayer in a gas station. You need somebody to walk this, this journey with you. And he gets like, well, I don't really know his name, but, but I do go to church. Uh, I said, well, uh, that's fine. I said, well, maybe, maybe there's somebody else in the church. Maybe there's a group of guys that you can talk to. Maybe there's a counselor there. I said, well, I, I don't really know anybody else. Uh, but I do go to church. Uh, and I said, well, or maybe you'll go to the website. Most websites have like a prayer request, and you can put in there what's happening, and hopefully somebody can connect with you and, and just, just meet you where you are. He said, well, I don't, I don't remember the name of the church, uh, but I do go to church. Uh, and I was like, oh, buddy, I have nothing else for you, man. Uh, so I kind of said, well, I mean, good luck, right, pretty much. And I end up leaving. And as before I got in my car, I did turn around and say, hey, and I hope you don't take this bad, but I say, you need to stop going to church, man. This is not about just going to church. I think you need to find Jesus somewhere and find a group of people that can help you with that journey. Uh, I think this idea of just going to church is just not working out for you. You stop going to church. Find God, whatever it is that you can find him. And I share that with you because that's, uh, that, that's my first point uh, for today. I'm a big believer that God's purpose for our lives is not for us to go to church. The whole point you and I were created is not so you and I can go to church. It is so you and I can follow Jesus. And there's a huge, huge difference in that. I'm a, I'm a believer that you can go to church every week two or three times a week and yet never meet Jesus. I believe that you can go to church three times a week and, and walk in life completely alone. I mean, I believe you can go to church every week, two or three times a week, and, and be a jerk, I mean, in life. It's not about going to church. It's about following Jesus. And if you follow Jesus, one of the places where you may end up is in church. Now, it's not going to be the only place. Make sure about that. And it may not be the most common place. But you will end up in church if you follow Jesus. There is this story in, in, the, in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. And this is what it says. So one day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon, who was also called Peter, and Andrew. They were throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. So Jesus called them out. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets, and they followed him. So a little farther up in the shore, brothers, James and John, sitting in the boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. He called them to come too. So they immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. You see, Jesus didn't took them to church with them. All Jesus said was, just follow me. Where? How long? How are you going to look like? He didn't go into details. All he said was, follow me. Now, you can look, you can read in the Bible, and some of the places they visited was the synagogue, where the temple, right, where the church at the time. But most of the story that took place between Jesus and these guys 
It happened outside of the church. And I tell you that because, because Christianity is not about a destination called church. It's not about just going to this place and this place is called church and you like unlock the next level, right? Christianity is about a person called Jesus. You see, if you think about it today, Sunday morning, all across the country, from different ethnic backgrounds, different cultures, different languages, different denominations, there was probably one question that most people or a lot of people asked themselves this, this morning and was, should we go to church? And maybe that was a question that was asked in your house today. Should we go to church today? And in most places, the answers I bet they were like, well, it's raining. <laughs> and somewhere else is snowing, and somewhere else is sunny and it's hot, right? Another answer was like, well, it's just been a long weekend. I'm tired. Maybe somewhere else like, well, there, there's football today. And and all of a sudden, this, this question of should we go to church, it just becomes a very, very optional question, right? It's like, should I go to the grocery store today? Thinking like, man, I have one banana and two slices of bread. I mean, I can last two more days, right? Should I go to the mall today? Should I go to this restaurant today? And it just becomes, it just becomes an optional thing, something that is negotiable. And, and that happens when, when church is the destination, right? But if, if following Jesus is the destination, then when Sunday morning comes, you know, all of a sudden going to church is not, it's not an option. It's just, it's just what you do. It's just who you are, right? I mean, for us who have kids at home or, or grandkids or nephews, like what me and my wife, when she never wakes up in the morning and says, hey, should we feed the kids today? <laughs> and I'm like, there's football today. I, I'm tired. It's raining, right? I mean, I come up with all kind of excuses, but it, it's not a negotiable, right? We feed the kids. I mean, what it would look like if, if following Jesus, that may take you to a lot of places, and a house of worship is one of them, a place where we are surrounded by people that can challenge us to be a better version of ourselves, it's one of those. He said, well, pastor, I mean, often I, I do want to go to church. Like, I have, I have good intentions to go to church. Uh, but there's a difference between, you know, good intentions and, you know, God's intentions for you, right? Uh, good intentions is still something that it's, it's around me. It's me-centered. It benefits me. Uh, and God's intentions is about what God wants for your life. But it's not centered around you. So, so what's, made, what's the difference between, you know, just going through the motions in Christianity and church being one of them, singing songs, praying prayers, listening to amazing sermons, right? Whatever it is that you do as a Christian <laughs> eh, or following Jesus, right? I mean, wh wh where is that line? And, and I believe the line comes down to, to control, to, to, who is, to who is in charge, Right? Because you can't, you can't live a center life in Jesus and still be in control of your life. There was an, there was an oh, now it's an old movie. I don't even know how old it is. A years ago called uh, Captain Phillips. Anybody remember that movie with Tom Hanks? So it's a movie about, uh, you know, boats and, and ships, uh, cargo ships. And at some point they get hijacked by pirates. Uh, in the middle of the ocean. And, you know, the pirates jump into the boat and uh, just take control of the boat. And at some point, the, the main pirate, uh, you know, get, gets in the face of the captain, in this case, Captain Phillips. And he tells him one, one of the most famous phrases in movies. Does anybody remember? He said, he said, look at me, look at me. I'm the captain now. Now, I'm, I'm not, I don't know a lot about cargo ships and how it works or boating or things like that. Uh, but the, what I do know is that at the end of the day, there can only be one captain. 
there can only be one person in charge. And, and, that, and for us, either, either that's us or that's somebody else. Simple as that. I mean, that could be you or that is somebody else. That could be Jesus. That could be somebody else that managed your life. So Jesus walked into the life of these guys. They were fishing. They were doing the nets. And Jesus said, follow me. What the Bible said? They left everything and followed Jesus. Now, just imagine if Jesus walked right now down the aisle here and said, okay, y'all, follow me. Who gets up? Or, or what, what will hold you back? I'll be honest. I said, like, hey, well, Jesus, I mean, I have five kids at home, and one of them, like, he's turning three tomorrow, and I want to have a birthday party, and I want to have cake. And I love you, but cake, right, Jesus? <laughs> I mean, at what time we're coming back? At what time this is going to be over? But Jesus didn't say the details, right? He just said, follow me. He said, you're not going to be back for supper, or you're going to be back for tomorrow so you can get up in the morning and go to work. Just follow me. So, I mean, I love to do that exercise. I mean, what will get on the way between you and following Jesus? Blindly. And I'll be the first one to throw it out there. I mean, I mean my wife and five kids. I don't know if I have the guts just to leave them behind. What else? What will get on your way? Job security? Paying the bills? A mortgage? Doctor's appointment or a surgery that you have scheduled? Maybe a loved one that because of his age, because of her age, because of their health, you you don't want to leave their side. I mean, and all those things are not bad. I'm not, by any means, I'm, I'm trying to be cynical. I mean, I tell you, I will struggle to just, if you used to say, follow me, I would like, like, can I do it four hours a day and come back home? Can, can we negotiate what that means? But you say, like, you just follow me. But it's, it's scary. It's overwhelming to think what following Jesus could mean. So these guys, they go and follow Jesus. And, and they spend, most historians believe, around three years with him. And we know some of the story that happened there. We don't know a lot of the story that happened there. Right? I mean, we know that there's a story when they fed 5,000 people. We don't know there were nights where they didn't have anything to eat and they were hungry to bed. I mean, we know they were traveling all across, you know, Israel, and there was bef- there was no Uber or no Marta, right? So they walk a lot. We don't know how often they saw their wives or their kids. We have no really idea how much really, you know, if they got sick, what happened to them? I mean, Jesus was there, so maybe he just do like Shh, and heal them. But following Jesus was completely being in a state that you trust that Jesus has your best interest at heart. It was not about perpetuating a a religion called, you know, Judaism at that point, or now Christianity. It was not about just going to the synagogue or now the church. And what happens that those days that they found themselves in the church, those days that they found themselves within other people that believe like them, they acknowledged that now the church, it wasn't about them. That the church exists for the world. You following me where I'm going with this? You see, bef- before Jesus, right, they, they had an idea of what the role of the church was. When Jesus came and said, follow me, and just blew their socks off, right, it completely changed their idea of what being a follower of Jesus was and what the point of the church was. It wasn't just a place that you can come and experience grace. The church was a place where, yeah, you can experience grace, so you can extend grace to others. The church wasn't a place where you can just come and experience the forgiveness of your sins. 
Yes, that took place. As long as you will pass that forgiveness and extend that to those, especially who were at the margins. You see, the church wasn't just about you. And I say that because we, we, we live in a part of the world, in the western part of the world, that is all about a personal relationship with Jesus. But you can't have a personal relationship with Jesus if you don't have a personal relationship with those around you. It doesn't work that way. I mean, personal holiness, right? It has to match social holiness. What you believe, it has to matter how you reflect that to others. So what does that look like for us? Maybe going to church for you and me shouldn't be just like coming to church. Maybe it should be like, you know, Brian Finley and Joe Harsh. Weeks ago, they got a phone call, said you need to go and move a single mom and drop everything they had to go and move this single mom. Maybe going to church is not just about coming to the building, but being about, you know, Katie Rollins and her friend Liza, who are trying to engage children in the community that before they go to school, they can help them accomplish their needs or meet their needs so they can get into the school and not be years behind. Maybe it's not about just coming to church and getting a, a program even for our kids, but be like Eowyn Jackson who, when saw that there were people hungry in the community, she would go home and pack food and just take the food to them. What it would look like if God wants you to follow him in 2023? Not just to come to church, but to follow him. Let's pray. God, we pray that the words that we, that we hear, right, when you, when you told your disciples, just follow me. Those two simple words, God, may change our life right now. God, what if in 2023, God, we genuinely want to follow you? And we want to move away from having good intentions as people, but God, really living good in God intentions in our lives. God, we want to live in such a way that whatever aspect in our life that we have to give control, God, that we can give it. God, not our life may have a new purpose, but God, that by your grace, you may use us of other lives can find purpose in you. We want to be that kind of church. A church that is not about us, but a church where us can be used for the sake of others. So God, I pray for everyone in this room and those watching at home that perhaps whatever it is that is holding us back to fully following you, God, that you can give us enough confidence and faith. That it's not about just dropping things, but it's about trusting those things under your care, knowing that you can take them farther than we can. Pray this in Jesus' name.